This is an update video to the unboxing and preview video that I put out a few days ago for the Artiso D16 Pro Pen display where I mentioned there were some drawing performance issues and when Artiso watched that video, they came back to me and said, hey, maybe you should install this firmware and it would improve drawing performance. So I went ahead to install the firmware and now the drawing performance, it's fantastic. So it's only fair for me to update the video and edit out the inaccuracies so that you can see the actual drawing performance to expect. So back to the main video. Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to unbox and give you a preview of the new Artiso D16 Pro Pen display. This product is going to be available for sale on Artiso's website very soon and they have some discount going on for pre-orders. I'll put the information in the video description below. So let's see what's included in the box. This is a review unit that was sent to me. So Artiso, they make This is a review unit that was sent to me. Ariso, they make pen displays in various sizes. They have 13, 16, 22. These are all the small items included in the box. By the way, this is just a preview video. I will give you the detailed review in a separate video. A stand is included and these are instructions on how you can set it up. It's actually pretty straightforward. So this is full metal. The black parts are rubber and plastic. So this flap here allows you to put the pen display. On the back we have the support. You see there's two support here. So you can have the stand at various height. And there are some hooks here for you to hook the support. So this is the tallest position. And this is the lowest position. Yep. So it's nice that they have included the stand, microfiber cleaning cloth, artist glove and quick start guide, USB wall charger or wall power. So here in Singapore, we use the three pin plug. You can probably choose the appropriate plug at the checkout page. USB cable. Here we have a male and female connection. This is probably for the power. Another cable. So at this end we have two ports. Looks like a full-size HDMI. So this will go to the computer and a typical type A USB. And on the other end that goes to the pen display. This is USB type C. This is the pen case included. It's made of some felt-like material. Velcro. Oh, they have included some replacement nibs. 10 replacement nibs are included and that's the nib remover. This is the pen. There is no charging port at the back. So this is not powered by battery. You don't have to charge this. The weight is it's just nice. The build quality seems to be very solid. Matte surface throughout except for this silver colored ring here. Two side buttons. This pen supports slightly over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. In addition to that, it also has tilt sensitivity. So this is the pen display. The screen protector is already pasted on the pen display. So let's peel off the protective film for the screen protector. Make sure to peel off the protective film for the screen protector and not the screen protector itself. I'm not sure if you can see clearly, but that's the matte screen protector on the glass. I see one bubble there under the screen protector. I don't think I will be able to remove that without introducing more air bubbles. So this is how the pen display looks and it looks nice. The build quality is quite solid. And this is how the matte surface looks when you have light against it. It has a nice textured surface for drawing. I don't know the price for this product. Anyway, I'm sure the price will be competitive with other brands. This is quite thin. It's about as thick as my laptop. Let's connect the pen display to my laptop. Thankfully, I still have the HDMI port so I don't have to buy another adapter. So it seems like my laptop is able to power the pen display using this cable. So I don't actually have to use the wall 
power and this additional USB cable. Since this is powered by the laptop, it's definitely going to drain the laptop battery much faster. If the USB port you're using does not supply enough power, then you will have to use the wall charger. This is a 15.6 inch pen display. The resolution is 1080p and it's said to support up to 90% Adobe RGB. I'm going to color calibrate this and tell you the actual color support in my full review. All I can say right now is the colors, they look good out of the box. The bezels are quite thick, but it's not really a downside because it allows you to rest your hand, rest your palm on the side, which is nice and comfortable. There are eight physical shortcut buttons on the side, four at the top and four at the bottom. And this is the control wheel and there is a button here. So when you press the buttons, there will be a label that shows up on screen telling you the functionality. So with this button in the middle, you can switch between the different functions like scroll up and down, increase brush size, and well, all these buttons are customizable. This button here allows you to change the color of the control wheel. The colors will change on their own automatically, or you can change them manually, or you can just turn off the lights. The buttons, they have firm feedback, Nice to click. This is a laminated display, so there is no gap between the glass surface and the actual screen beneath. So there is no gap between the pen tip and the line that appears beneath. So when drawing, it really feels like you're drawing on the surface of the screen. Alright, let's test the drawing performance now. In the earlier version of this video that you are watching, I mentioned something about jaggy or jittery lines, lag, sometimes the pressure is not working. Well, after the firmware update, everything seems to be working fine now. This is Medibank Paint Pro and pressure sensitivity works really well. And this is also very responsive. Now the pen, it's very sensitive. The initial activation force is very light, so you can draw very light without using pressure, and you can get those really thin lines. So this pen, it's really sensitive. And if you press down hard, of course, you're going to get the thicker lines. Drawing performance right now, it's predictable and consistent. And the lines, they taper really well. The curves are smooth and the pen is able to maintain consistent pressure. And the transition from thin to thick, it's also very smooth. See how the curve, how it turns the corner. So this part, it's very smooth and the pen is able to maintain consistent pressure. So that's nice. This is Krita. I'm using this software to show you tilt sensitivity. Let me increase the brush size so that you can see the cursor. I'm using the control wheel and it works really well. So pay attention to the shape of the cursor as I change the direction of the pen. So it's able to detect the direction of the pen. Let me reduce the brush size and draw some vertical strokes. These are the vertical strokes, the horizontal strokes. Now tilt and pressure can work at the same time. So this is drawn very lightly and this is drawn with a lot of pressure. Let me change the direction of the pen. So this time around the darker area should be at the bottom and it works. This is Clip Studio Paint and this is very responsive. There is very minimal input lag. And if there is, it's very difficult to spot. The lines, they come out just the way I want them to. Performance is very predictable. Pressure sensitivity works really well. The lines, they taper really nicely. If you have any issues with the pen not working 
with Clip Studio Paint, you can go into the preferences and toggle between WinTab and tablet PC and also maybe try turning this mouse mode on and off. These are the settings that work for me. Affinity Photo works surprisingly well. It's very responsive and pressure sensitivity works fantastic handles dots as well it's very responsive and it just works this is adobe illustrator so before i updated the firmware it was very laggy now it's very responsive and pressure sensitivity works very well by the way, this display is not a touch screen, so it doesn't support any finger gesture shortcuts. And lastly, we have Photoshop. There is noticeable lag, which means if you draw really fast, you're going to see the gap between the line and the pen tip. The input lag is actually from Photoshop. Photoshop is known to be quite laggy at times. So pressure sensitivity works quite well here. The lines, they taper very nicely here. And the curves, smooth, but there is input lag. As the curve turns, the corners, they are very smooth. And the pen is able to hold the pressure consistently. The transition from thin to thick, it's also quite smooth. All right, to conclude, let me give you the list of pros and cons. I like the design. I like how it looks. The build quality seems to be quite solid. I like that they have included the stand, the matte surface screen protector. It's really nice to draw on. It has a very nice tactile feeling when drawing. The buttons, they work really well and they are quite convenient to use. And the line quality, fantastic. Strong performance overall, it's predictable, it's consistent. Pressure and tilt sensitivity works really well. In the earlier version of this video, I tested the pen display without the firmware installed, but now with the firmware installed, um, the performance that you watched earlier, that's what you can expect. And I'm quite satisfied when it comes to the drawing performance now. For the downsides, well, the anti glare on the matte screen protector, I find it to be a bit aggressive, so it affects the colors. Anyway, in my full review, I will be color calibrating the pen display to tell you the actual color support as well as the actual brightness of the pen display. If you look at the pen display from the side, you can definitely see the anti glare uh, working its effect, creating this uh, slight hazy white hazy thing that really affects the colors and the contrast but if you are looking at it straight on it it looks all right and the other downside is with this particular unit that i have i do see some air bubbles beneath the screen protector and yeah i think that's about all the downsides i can think of at the time of this review, the Mac driver is not out yet, so I'm going to wait for the Mac driver to appear before I make the full and detailed review talking about the driver functionality, color accuracy, and the overall drawing performance on both Windows and Mac OS in greater detail. So right now, I can say is um, it works well. And currently, Artisol is having some uh, pre-sale or pre-order discounts, so you can check out all the information in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's helpful. See you in the next one. Bye.